Hello, I'm Jack. Hi, I'm Natty and we're from Fickle Friends and you're watching Toasted. Welcome to Groningen. Hello, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> How was your breakfast? It was really good, thanks. Yeah, it was nice. You had some time that you didn't even had your breakfast yet. Oh, no, no, I have. But it's co coffee is most important at this point in the day, I think. You just arrived, basically, yesterday oh, evening, awesome. right? Okay, <laughs> did you get a chance to look around at the festival and see any bands yet? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we went, um, we went and saw Bonsai. Um, and then it gets a bit hazy after that, but we did go elsewhere. And then we got caught in the snow. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, fun, though. It was, it was fun. really fun. What do you think of a festival like this? Because, I mean, uh, it is all new bands. It's all new music. And, of course, you have to be into new music to discover, to, to want to discover new music, to be here. Um, how, how does it work for you guys? Because you are musicians. Are you just barge in and be surprised? Or do you have the time schedule and deliberately look for bonsai? Um, well, we knew Bonzo was playing because our tour manager was doing sound, but uh, usually, like, we do, because you don't get to see a lot of bands and stuff over the festival period, because you're usually quite busy, um, it's a really, we, we see who we want to see and we just kind of do that. And then usually later on in the evening, we just kind of go where our feet take us. Yeah. Like, uh, if we've got the time, we'll see, we'll see who's free, who's playing in the time we're free, and then we'll try and check them out if yeah. we can. But, like, like Younger's playing later on. You guys have been independent for, for a long period of time, right? At least two or three years. Um, was that a deliberate choice to, to do it yourself or weren't the major labels interested yet or you, you, don't, you didn't want to be signed? I, know, I think it was I think it was because we just didn't really know what we were doing. And then the label... No, well, we started out, obviously, as everyone does, we're just kind of doing it ourselves. And then I think we wanted to kind of sign a record deal, but yeah, it was just too early for us. And then so we ended up doing it ourselves for a couple of years. And then... You had a lot of success being independent, you know? I mean, because you played so many gigs, you even did festivals, so you had a lot of fans. So why sign to a major label? Well, well, we had we had a booking agent, which was great, because he was getting us lots of shows. It's basically at that point we needed, um, <coughs> we needed we the extra... plateau, weren't we? Yeah. We needed the extra. We needed the extra funding, and we needed like to be able to kind of push our music further than what it was because it was going on the same level for a long time. We just needed uh, an extra push, so that's why we signed to Amazing. This conference with this festival uh, for the music industry, one of the topics is where all the people get together that it's so tough for a band to do media right now because there's no television anymore. Nobody's watching television. There's the radio is going down. Uh, so basically the classic media are in turmoil and they don't know what to do. Um, you, however, as a band, uh, and I just wrote this down, um, in 2016, 2.7 million Spotify listeners streamed 65.8 years of your music, which is incredible. That's yeah. pretty cool. So I think Spotify is amazing and it's like a really, really important platform for us <coughs> just because now we don't really have SoundCloud and like you said, you don't, to really like find music through watching MTV or whatever anymore and things like that it's just it's free although we don't make a lot of money from it but it's just so many different people can find your music in so many different ways because of all the different playlists and stuff like that and recommended and yeah I mentioned this because like I mean like I said the classic media in turmoil they don't know how to react and it's just like basically one big chagrin they go like well the world is going to shit, so nobody wants us anymore, we don't know what to do. And the other hand, you have like all this new media, which is fantastic for a new band. Yeah, it's great. I love You're it. not complaining. No, no, no it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. Like, I mean, no one's buying records and stuff, it's just all different, but it's, it's, it's fine. Just like find out new ways to kind of make it work for you. I guess. How do you stand out as a band, though? Because there are a lot of bands. I mean, there is a massive... Uh, I, think, I think we stand out. It's kind of like... Thank you. Thank you. We've been, We've been doing it for so long, we've been playing shows for so long. I think that's the, the thing that separates us is like, you can listen to us online, but you can come and see us and we're like, we've been playing for so long, it's like, do you know what I mean? We you try like to it. put on like a show that's like our most kind of, I don't know, it's, it's my favorite thing to do, but like, because we've been touring for so long and like, that's how we got our original fan base is just through playing shows. So that's kind of like, I think maybe where we stand out at this point for a fairly new band, we kind of, I don't know if we'd, yeah. Another trend that I notice here talking to a lot of bands is that I, basically there's a schism concerning the output of music is either bands just release singles, like maybe three or four, that's it, and 
or they do full-length albums and they do it like twice a year because they're really prodigious. What is your thing? Everybody wants to put out an album, I think. I think that's just like, it's a body of work that you kind of have worked so long towards and you want it's a collection of songs. So we are putting out a record this year, but I think singles are so important if you want to gain traction at the beginning because it's just really quick and instant and there's no pressure of kind of putting investing loads of money or loads of time in something before you kind of test the water with songs mm -hmm. exactly. you are working on new material right now uh, of course i've been going through your social media uh, fun stuff there as well <laughs> who got uh, who uh, got the pikachu uh, onesie That's mine. <laughs> where did you get it i got it from primark <laughs> oh, really? you know primark yeah <coughs> i think it was just my basically my he the heating in my house this, this doesn't work so it's kind of every day we're writing songs in our house and I'm freezing and <coughs> Natty sits kind of on my bed with a scarf and like a blanket and I'm there like freezing and so I just thought I need, I need something so I just got the onesie it's great yeah the Pikachu onesie yeah. would, would look good on stage though too uh, it'd be too hot on stage that's the thing the whole reason is it's, it's really warm yeah it's like, a, it's like a synthetic fabric or something oh yeah I don't, I don't know wearing I just, a blanket yeah it's just like wearing a big blanket yeah it's nice though <laughs> Hey, um, there's also a lot of posts on work, 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 work. Um, are you guys actually writing the stuff in the studio, writing songs in the studio, or, or do you compose stuff while you're on tour? Or how do you, how do you work? How do you make your music? Most of it, we just do it at my house or in kind the of Pikachu ones, in the Pikachu one. So it is writing and recording at the same time. It's like it's uh, it, yeah. Well, we kind of write and kind of record demos, and then like when we finish, because we kind of keep going back to songs and reworking them in a demo form, and then when they're finished. Then we'll go and like maybe like record drums and vocals properly and record the rest of it and stuff like that in the studio. So yeah. We always work off what we do in the demo, so it's just kind of like we might redo a bit, a few bits, and record it properly. But. So when will the album be done? I mean, when will the recordings and the writing? You, you're already smiling. <laughs> it's funny because we, we, we don't know, know. <laughs> but soon, very soon because it's, it's almost done. But we just there's not like a date where we have to finish it. We're not gonna. We're Rush more it, relying yeah. on other people. It's more like when can we get in the studio to finish things off? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, cool. we, we, we want to finish it. I want to finish it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what's it going to be like? Could you tell us a little about the new album? How many tracks? It's, well, we, again, we don't know exactly how many tracks, but the, the music's going to be really interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of different stuff because we've been writing. It's kind of a mix of songs like that we've been writing over the last maybe two or three years. So. Some of the songs are going to sound really different, but I think it's going to be That's really always fun. an interesting thing, because you, you were talking about an album, everybody wants to put out an album, it's, it's like, the, I think, the ultimate creative challenge. But if you've, like you said, been writing songs for a couple of years, probably there are some extremely different songs. How can you, how can you put them together in one cohesive unity? Well, that's the kind of, where the, the production comes into it, you need to kind of make sure the, sound, the songs obviously sound like the same band because obviously we've changed a lot in the last few years but I think they will yeah I yeah. love I love records which have kind of got really different things going on I'm trying to think of like a really good example but like any any great <coughs> pop record now like even like Little Mix or yes. The Weeknd if you actually you always know that it's them but if you actually look at the album there's so many different genres of songs yeah. that they do but I think it's just going to be a bit like that and like we did a lot of kind of like odd songs, which might surprise people, but I think it'll be cool. Do you consider yourself to make pop music? Yeah. What is good pop music? Just there's a lot of shit as well. I mean, <laughs> well, there's, yeah, what is good pop music? I don't know. I good pop music, I'd say, is like instant hooks, so you can remember what you've just heard. Um, Something that makes you feel, or like something you can relate to, something that's got like a really strong lyric. That's what really good pop music is. It's just something where you can be like, oh, that's that song. Yeah. And what I also think, and uh, this is where your music comes in, it should be interesting to listen to, not just once, but like a hundred times with one song. And I love the way, I'll call this multi-layered, your music is multi-layered, and you keep on discovering stuff while listening to the song. Yeah, exactly. We 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 want it to be really easily listen l l listenable, but at the same time, as you said, really interesting. And we spend time doing like the drums, and we spend time doing different layers and making it interesting. Really, because yeah, we we've got to love it as well. So yeah, I hope. Is it still fun actually playing live? I mean, because you've played so many gigs now. <coughs> it's so much fun. Every time we so we've had the past 
like two months off from touring and like the the fact that we're here today we were so excited just to play a show again because it's like I don't know it's just what we, what we really really love doing like yeah. when you've been in writing for two months it's just like you need to go and play a show even though you've done it a million times before yeah, but yeah. the audience is always different every show is different yeah so it doesn't get boring Definitely. what holds in your future for you guys because we are here what the hell is this <laughs> Just letting just fall. We're still alive. We're still alive. <laughs> We're in an old factory. The building is slowly. The outtakes. Yes. We definitely have it on one camera, no matter what. <laughs> well, I guess all of the cameras would have caught that. That's good. Um, Incredible. Anyway, so we just got attacked by the building. Uh, we're still alive. Uh, what, what holds in your future for you guys? Um, well, album out this year. Uh, this year, this year just started. So maybe it will only. I don't know, is it one month or 12? Or? I'm going to say it's in the middle, I think. In the middle of the year. Yeah. 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 Be great. But obviously, be great. obviously being here today, we're hoping to do a lot more um, of Europe during this festival season. Mm -hmm. uh, is this festival good for, for, for showcasing for bookers? I mean, do you get gigs out of this? We've never played yeah, it before, played it. but that's what we're told. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Hopefully. Yeah, it's similar to The Great Escape in Brighton, like, which is where we're from. So it's like, there's lots of industry and stuff. So it's always good to, yeah, it's good to play. Is it, is it still fun to live in Brighton? Because I have friends in Brighton and uh, they say, well, this place is slowly falling apart. I mean, the pier uh, burned down and... Yeah. Oh, I, I love it still, yeah. I think it's really cool. The music scene is always happening in Brighton for some reason. I've, well, how come, actually? I don't know. I mean, not that many bands play in Brighton. Well, they do, but not as much as... The other cities, but like, just People things really. People say that, don't they? But it's yeah. kind of like there's a lot of venues, like there's loads of music venues, and it has the great escape. But I like, I think there's so much music that you don't. There's, it's not always good. <laughs> but obviously, there's some awesome stuff coming from Brighton, though. Like, yeah, I'm trying to, Black Honey, yeah, yeah. Broad Blood can kind of be classed from Brighton, can't they? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hey, I hope to see you guys uh, in uh, in Europe or anywhere. So actually, do you guys have plans to go to the States at all? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've been out there a lot. We've done a lot of recording out there. But yeah, I think we're going to go back and play a few shows this year. Is it tough for you guys to break the American market as well? Because, I mean, it's a massive country, of course. It's so vast that it's really difficult. But, I, I mean, Spotify is a really good way of seeing who's listening to you. And we went in for a meeting with them and they were like, Oh, your like biggest listeners are from like Manhattan and LA and like oh, Chicago, and we're like, oh, this is really cool. Like you can kind of plan where you want to go and play because depending on who's listening to your music. I love the statistics on Spotify. I mean, I was checking it out, and it was like, you guys have like 500 to 600 thousand listeners like every month. It's like that's incredible. It's like your own radio station. Yes, <laughs> it's great. Love it. It's like Sorry. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for your time, and uh, I hope you have a good gig tonight. I'm sure you'll have a good gig tonight. Thanks very much, yeah. Thank you.